What up, soul fam? Phone looked weird. So I wanted to discuss something. Maybe you've been experienced. Kind of like an energy update. But just sharing my experience. A lot of triggering lately. And uh, a lot of anger. You know, just experiencing it. Like, witnessing it. Not really standing in it for too long, but it's been coming up. And I don't really consider myself an angry person. But maybe that's my ego denying it. Which I believe it is because if that shit, if, if you feel your blood boil over something that's happening that's out of your control, you have an anger issue. So I wanted to discuss this because that is the one thing that will block you from spirit more than anything, is anger. You know, some people say, oh, no, it's fear. I'm sorry, but there's been fear my whole freaking awakening. From the moment I took the leap of faith up until now. So you can't sit there and tell me that when you're in a state of fear, Spirit can't get to you. Now, I guess you could say that, well, once that fear subsides, they'll come through. But the fact of the matter is, anger. When you're an angry person and it controls your day, day in and day out, you are literally blocking your higher self, your guides, from delivering information that could be of service to you, that is of service to you, for the next, next part of your, your, your journey. And I've realized, you know, anger's been coming up. And it's something that I have to heal because I've noticed it, it's petty ass anger. You know, like, maybe someone, you know, asked if I had a mask some stupid, ridiculous thing like that. And you know, I have my guard up for that. And uh, I realized I was put in a situation where it happened. And by the grace of God, this woman was a sweetheart. And she didn't, you know, take me too personal. And honestly, I didn't like, wasn't super angry, but the tone and the energy of my words said it all you know and I forgave myself for that and I and I and I set my intention to not experience that again because it's petty and it shows a weakness within me that means I am not confident to communicate my words in a in a just manner I have to sound all cocky and arrogant or whatever and now it's out of alignment. So there's a lot of healing going on within, within this 3D realm. <laughs> you know, I don't like to use these far out terms. But if you're experiencing turmoil in your life and this anger is coming to the surface and you find yourself getting into petty ass arguments with people that will never even go anywhere because both sides are too attached to being right in their pride that they just can't let the shit go. That's telling you. That's some shit you have to heal. Most of us be like, oh, you know, get down on ourselves for it and then sweep it under the rug and then keep on experiencing it. But in order to heal it, you have to feel it. You gotta experience it while it comes up. So the next time that you experience your anger or any low vibrational emotion for that matter, whether it's jealousy, envy, resentment, any of that, stand with that. Stand with that feeling, that state of being. And just say, I'm okay. You're like, I'm gonna let you do that, you know? You're like, I'm gonna let you feel like that. It's okay to feel like that. And just be with that feeling until it goes. And if you do that every time you experience these negative, dense emotions, they're not going to come around so frequently. 
when they do come around, there's going to be a good reason for them. They're just not, you know, un, unprocessed trauma. These are just things that are happening in the moment. So, there's a lot of opportunity going on. So, if you are working on yourself and trying to connect your, or connect your, you know, get a stronger connection to spirit, to source, to your angels, to your guides, and you find yourself going through these bouts of anger, that's a blessing. It's a blessing. So just ask yourself, why am I angry? Is it because I feel like I can't control this situation and I feel powerless over it? Why do I need to, why do I have this need to feel like I need to control everything? And where has this gotten me in my life? This need to control everything. When we have a need to control everything, we live in fear constantly. And we think this illusion of having everything our way perfect and won't go outside that comfort zone whatsoever is protecting us. But really, it's weakening us. And we have to become aware of these walls we put up around us. Protect us. You're, not, you're doing the complete opposite. So it's time to face it. Like, that's real man shit. Like, I'm sick and tired of hearing, you think you're a fucking man type shit. No, if you're a fucking man, you will heal that shit within you so you don't go around projecting it onto others. Because that's not, <laughs> that's not loving kindness. That is not going to get you anywhere. All that's going to do is keep on you attracting them angry ass people that are going to give in to your triggers. And one day, one day, you might not be able to control your anger and you lash out on somebody. And let me tell you something. The universe is really good at learning lessons. Really good at teaching lessons, I mean. And you just might learn that lesson that you can't turn your back to. And that's why it's so important to control our anger. And right now, as it seems, the universe is having less tolerance for our nonsense, for our arrogance, our ignorance. And it's not going to give you so many chances to be going around treating everybody like shit because you've had a bad day or, you know, whatever it is. We all do it in some type of way. But being aware of it is key. And if you're denying it, just know that is your ego trying to protect itself, trying to protect you from you becoming your greatest self. That's all that is. It's protecting an illusion. Someone that doesn't even exist. Because all you are is a group of stories, a group of experiences that you've had which you've created a story of. And you allow this story to define who you are. And you've allowed it to define who you are. Probably all the way up until now. Not knowing that you have the power to recreate that story at any time in your life. But you're going to have to have a strong desire to do that. What is your why? We all should have a why and why we do things. The why is the fuel. And sometimes, you know, the why is out of egoic needs. As far as like, oh, I'm going to prove this person wrong. But hey, if that gets you to your goal and you're not stepping on anybody's toes along the way, you're just using that as fuel. Wow, they've... They didn't believe in me. They turned their back to me. Watch. Let me show them something. Let that, let that shit be fire. That's what it is. If you think things are getting done to you, and people are turning their back to you, but that's the universe saying, I'm just sending you some gasoline, some fuel. Use it as fuel. Let that shit fire you up. You know? Let go of the story that you're telling yourself. Unless that story is in service to you and <laughs> you're taking forward strides, you gotta let it go. So find out what story you're telling yourself. 
Because that story All he thinks it's an angry person. All he thinks a lot of things that aren't true. You gotta find what those things are. Just like creating a belief, it's like stabilizing a table. You know, you got your your flat top, and then your legs are the are the reasons why you believe that. So in order to deconstruct a belief, you have to do the same thing, except the opposite. <laughs> the same thing, except the opposite. You have to pull those legs out from under it. Well, why isn't that true? Shit, well, just look at me. I feel amazing, I look amazing, I taste amazing. <laughs> Whatever it is, you gotta tell yourself, you know? Self-love, baby. Don't let anybody block your shine because it makes them uncomfortable that should be more reason to shine be the example be you but i just wanted to share that message because a lot of people are telling themselves some faulty ass story and let me tell you something if you're going to tell yourself a faulty ass story it might as well be the greatest story you've ever heard, right? If you're gonna tell yourself some bullshit things, some lies that aren't true, why don't they be amazing? Why don't they feel fun and exciting thinking about them and lying them about them to yourself instead of them feeling like shit and ruin your day and feel hopeless? How about that? Let's create that story. Let's create that far out ass story. Uh, you know, you becoming the greatest inspiration the world has ever seen. Your greatest expression of love, changing the world. Inventing something that will be here for thousands, shit, hundreds of thousands of years. Who knows? I don't think there's that much time left on this planet, but hey, <laughs> that's what makes it so cool. When you're telling yourself a story, there's no limits to it. None. Do your thing. Have fun with it. See, I, I don't, I've been having this creative spark, and I realize, which, if I ain't having fun, it ain't gonna, people ain't gonna resonate with it. They're not gonna resonate with it. So, my only, I got two rules when I write. One, it has to be fun. And in order for it to be fun, I got to be talking about things that kind of fire me up, spark me. And then the second one is I can't judge it. It's not mine to judge. I believe it's flowing through me. So I told myself I do not give myself permission to judge whatever shows up on this screen until I'm told right here that it's complete. And then I'll read the rough draft and I'll revise and I'll go on. But make an agreement with yourself, an agreement that serves you, an agreement that prevents you from turning your back on your dream. Because the world don't need perfectionism. The world needs action. And so many times we're so afraid of being a failure or people laughing at us or any of those self-limiting beliefs or excuses <laughs> you know what happened whenever that goes on you know what to do I lost my train of thought so that was that tells me that it was time to go so no more of that you're the writer of this story. Find your agreement that serves you. And if you haven't read the book, The Four Agreements, I highly encourage you to do so. You can find it on YouTube in the audiobook version. Some of the, um, some of the uh, videos are broken down into just 
separate chapter. So you won't get the whole book, but there'll be four chapters individually on there. I've read, or I've listened to it numerous times. And um, one of the most important agreements that you could ever, that you've ever made, and that is be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with the words that you say, you spell. Because words are spells. Spell a word, you're spelling. You're actually drawing it in to creation. So be impeccable with that. Be mindful of the words that you use. Like, oh, this is killing me. Things like that, you know. Oh, never gonna fucking succeed. Ah, you know what I mean? God, I'm gonna blow my... You know what? These things, these are self-limiting. And even though you think that they're meaningless, you have a part of you always listening called your subconscious mind. And this is just taking inventory of the fucking doubt, the self-negative belief, and everything. And it takes everything literal. Everything. So be mindful of the words that you tell yourself. Be, be mindful of the words that you tell others. Because you don't know what you could say that could change your world. That's it. You don't know. I mean, imagine you have a bad day and you fly off at the mouth at somebody. Out of a, a spit of anger. And then you find out a week later that that person was also having a bad day. Except they weren't as strong as you, so they went home and put a gun in their mouth and blew their brains out. All because you had a bad day you can control your anger and you lashed out on somebody else and this could be a reality but either way everybody's having a beautiful day don't let it get you down remember it's a game have fun with it and if you're not having fun you're doing it wrong you have to realize that there's some things that we have to accept that we came here to experience and there's no getting away with that. And those three, those three things are change, loss, and death. Once you can surrender to those three things, your life will become so much easier. Find out what it's gonna take for you to surrender to that, for you to not fear death. Because once you let go of the fear of death, you reach your true level of empowerment along with not giving a fuck what others think of you. Those two powers right there, O-M-G. So work on that. That's what I'm working on. Letting go of my fear of death. In my eyes, I'm already dead. I came out, I came to this planet with an outdate. So literally, I'm already dead. And with that being said, live your best fucking life. Don't let anybody get in the way of that. And I know there was something else I was supposed to say back then, but I just <laughs> kind of jumped right. Live your best life. And just think, if you're not doing that, because you're too worried about what others think or maybe they won't agree with it, you're allowing that person to live not only their own life, but yours as well. What makes them so fucking special? They get to live two lives. Love yourself.